here today to film my April TBR. Um, no, I'm not. It's May. This is what lockdown has done. I have no idea what month I'm even preparing for anymore. 25th. It's still March. Um, no, it's not. So it's no, going for my May TBR. Sorry about that. So between the 11th and the 24th of May, uh, How to Train Your Gavin is running round two of Believeathon. Um, I didn't take part in the first round, but we thought we would do it second round because um, it's all about celebrating middle grade and about going on an adventure through this beautiful map that he has designed, what he designed with somebody, he did the colouring, um, and kind of going on this journey to explore more middle grade. So we've decided that instead of doing it the way that Gavin recommends and like picking a direction to go through the map, we're actually going to try and read something for every prompt. Um, because we've been reading so quickly at the moment, I think we're going to be on like 25 books for April. Um, but yeah, so we're thinking because we've read that many, we're thinking that we'll be able to get through these quite quickly where they're very, very short. So I will let you know what the prompt is, where the location is on Gavin's map and what book we're reading for it. And then I'll go through the rest of our May TBR afterwards because we're going to try and fit some books in at the end of the month and a couple books in at the beginning. TBR I'm the TBR jar and I'm so excited. I was like bullying Sean into filming this because I want to know what I'm going to get out of the jar. So, for, even I was going to say bucket and then I went for jar instead. So I went for jar. Right, so um, for the first prompt for Believeathon, which is The Poacher's Pocket Inn, you have to read the first book in a series. So for this, we've decided to read A Pinch of Magic by Michelle Harrison. Um, we bought A Sprinkle of Sorcery from Waterstones la two months ago because it hasn't been open in like forever. Um, because they had signed sprayed edge editions, so we thought we'd pick up, not realising it was the second book in a series. And Sean loves orange, and it is orange. Um, so we've got the first book on Kindle since then because they had a deal on it and it was only 99p. So we're going to read that and then hopefully carry on with the series over the next couple of months. Um, I don't really know a lot about this. I've just seen a lot of people recommending it. Um, Gavin worked with Michelle for Middle Grade Monthly two months ago, I believe. Um, so it's quite clear that he loves her and this was actually the book that he recommended for this prompt so we thought that we would run with it. The second stop on the Believeathon journey is The Yellow Brick Road, which is a book that you were supposed to read years ago. So for that, I've decided to read Stormbreaker by Anthony Horowitz. This is Sean's fancy schmancy version that has the first four books in it. So we're really gonna read the first one. Uh, this is one of my mum's favorite series of all time and she has been bullying me to read them since I was either 13 or 14 and I still haven't picked them up. So this is definitely gonna get ticked off. This follows a spy called Alex Ryder and that's literally all I know. They made he, a movie. They made a movie. It had Alex Pettifer in it. I can remember that. I have seen the beginning of it and I don't remember watching the whole thing, but I can remember he's like trapped in a car boot or something. Um, so that sounds like it's going to be exciting. The book is so much better. Really? Ooh, yeah. apparently the book is a lot better. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I think this it's about 150 pages, so we should be able to read it really, really quickly. And um, I'm actually planning on trying to read a few more of these before the end of the year because Sean wants to read Eagle Strike before his birthday in September, which is the fourth one. So hopefully you'll get to see us go on a journey with Alex Ryder over the next few months. The third stop on the Believeathon map is Baba Yaga's house, which is featuring a family relationship. For that we've picked Dreaming the Bear by Mimi Sabo, which I picked up at Yelk a couple of years ago. Um, it's about a girl whose family moves to like the wilderness um, and they all seem to be thriving there. They love being outdoorsy people, but she's really missing like her home comforts. Um, don't know too much about it, but it's like under 200 pages so again it's gonna be a very very quick read we've been thinking of unhauling it because we haven't heard anything about it so this way we can read it and then make a decision afterwards because it does sound like it's gonna go one of two ways like because it's her with the bear could be great or it could be awful we will find out the next stop on the Believeathon map is Wonder Falls and for this we're reading Wonder by RJ Palacio because it's all about a book featuring a disability um, so Wonder is about a boy who has facial disfigurement um and he is bullied at school and it's just him i think it's going to be a lot about kind of acceptance and accepting that people can be different and the way that people can look different um and that it doesn't really matter as, about, as long as the person underneath is still good um there was a film made of this last year i believe and i heard a lot of good things about it and i've been wanting to read this for a while so it's good that we're finally going to be ticking this one off 
The next stop on the Believe Upon map is the 100 Acre Wood from Winnie the Pooh, um, and that is to read a book with yellow on the cover, which means it's perfect that we only just received our bundle of zombie books by Darren Chan because the first book is bright yellow. Um, Sean has wanted to read these for ages. I don't know anything about them apart from their zombies. Sean's read the first one already, so he it's a reread for him because he doesn't really remember anything about it. I can't tell you anything about this part from the fact that there's zombies in it, but it's very, very short. Um, we've got like a whole slew of Darren Chan books over here. Sean has a whole slew. I mean, I technically bought the first five of these, but um, yeah, we're hoping to get this done. Hopefully I'll enjoy it. I'm really not sure what I'm going to think. Um, I've read the first couple of the Cirque du Freak books by Darren Chan and I enjoyed them, but it'll be interesting to see how this goes. Yeah, so um, when we saw Taran Mafaru, he did mention Darren Chan as one of the people who kind of like um, inspired him when he decided he wanted to be an author because like he'd read all of his books. So the fact that we loved Haram Afaru's writing, um, hopefully that means I'll also kind of have that connection with Darren Shan. I'm a bit worried that I might have left it a bit too long to read it, but um, hopefully it'll go well. Yeah, so the Cirque du Freak books, uh, right. Sean, no, not the Cirque du Freak, Demon Arta is Sean's favourite series. So we are going to be rereading, though he's going to reread those, I'm going to read those with him at some point, possibly this year, possibly next year. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how that goes. <laughs> so the next stop on the Believe Upon map is The Deep Woods, and that is a book which is published before 2000. For this we picked Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling, because I thought seeing as we've taken part in the Owl's Readathon, now is the perfect time to actually read the Harry Potter books. Um, I've read the first one more times than I can remember, and I really can't remember anything about it. Apart from like the basic stuff, like there's a boy called Harry, you're a wizard Harry, you've got to go to Hogwarts, there's Ron and Hermione, and then there's a snake but that might also be in the second book uh there's a mirror there's a mirror that he looks in so this is the one that has the chess game and stuff at the end yeah i i can't remember enough about this one the worst, um the worst logic puzzle ever sean says it's the worst logic puzzle ever i can't really remember anything about it so we will see how i feel about it when we get to that i i honestly i 